had an interesting talk with people the other day that suggests that America itself may be turning to or selling out to fascism. And there are even reports that suggest that these individuals may be well in number. While first world progressives and white liberals may be fully content with voting for Bernie Sanders, I have remained indifferent on or kept my voice out of it. I would not say that my vote would be cast for anyone in particular, as I have several ideological issues with Bernie Sanders and his policy, but in an attempt to keep the fascists out, I would say that I may participate in bourgeois elections, but vote for Sanders to keep the fascist Republican Party and Donald Trump out of power. However, this does not mean that I would be selling out or supporting imperialism, because I myself see it as more of tactical voting which at this juncture is something many of my fellow Marxists outside the U.S. don't understand, with all due respect to them. However, I do understand their skepticism, and it is also their analysis that has also made, me, made this coming presidential election a bit of a numb one for me. However, the case of white liberals who would be content for voting for Sanders, uh, that would be content voting for Sanders if he got the nomination, but not for Hillary Clinton or Martin O'Malley, and would be content with voting, uh, or, or would be content for voting for Donald Trump if Sanders did not get the nomination. Now, this is a complete contradiction of politics, and a huge hypocrisy on the so-called American progressive. Now, these are also the same people who then flip-flop and call themselves independent. But the problem with independence is that they are indecisive or contradict themselves in politics in general and even are willing to sell out their own beliefs or vote against their own interests if the candidate they were solely behind were not to win. I'm not saying that this is for all, per for all independents, but this is for a slight few or some. This is not something we can afford in the United States. Donald Trump represents a fascist threat, and the GOP represents a complete scaling back of any advancements that have been made in progressive policy in the United States. LGBT rights, women's rights to choose would be restricted, and rampant xenophobia against immigrants and the Islamophobia against Muslims and people from the Arab world would put tremendous strain on the country's social dynamic. These individuals who are content with voting for Sanders, but would completely flip the script and vote for Trump out of spite or distaste for Hillary Clinton, is the direct reactionary product of first world thinking. American white liberals, even the particularly well-educated young masses, seem prepared to vote fascism into power, then vote for Hillary Clinton, despite the fact that Clinton, ironically, represents a less cozier relationship with corporations than Trump. The reality is, Trump himself is a corporatist. That is what the third positionists want as an economic policy and as a model. They want to keep power in the hands of corporations and in, and in the hands of the rich, giving the rich further tax breaks and taxing and putting further hardships on the poor. Not to mention the insane social policies that white liberals conveniently get amnesia about when they consider him as an alternative choice. Now, Clinton may be a syncretic sellout and, and the typical bourgeois politician, but she does actually represent less of a corporatist stance than Trump and the GOP. Clinton believes in laissez-faire economics, uh, but with the ideals of typical bourgeois, liberal, regulationist sort of policy. Whereas Trump and the GOP want a more anarcho-capitalistic and third-positionist approach in putting power solely in the hands of the corporate structure, instituting racist policy and infringing on the rights of those of a sexual or religious minority. Ironically, the party that is for limited government is actually advocating a statist and totalitarian system. This is not new. This is something that I have spoken about many times. But with those who are voting for Bernie Sanders, who would be content for selling out to Trump or Sanders not to get the nomination, would essentially be selling out their beliefs and the country to fascism. They represent, uh, uh, they represent this hypocrisy and contradiction of politics, where in times of sheer desperation, the people would be more willing to accept a totalitarian leader and government when, they fi uh, when the fight that they have so put so much time and effort into were to be defeated. 
This is what we call quasi-fascism, and it's what happens when ideas or politics itself does not grow and develop, and for Marxists, we have seen this happen ourselves, such as the talks that are going on between the leader of the Communist Party of the Philippines and a known third positionist in the country. This is why Sanders, while he still represents a continued imperialist policy under Obama, is still the tactical choice now more than ever, because his defeat in the Democratic primaries could seriously shift the balance of power in Trump's favor. And if this were to happen, it is very safe to say America could easily fall to full fascism. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Peace.